Welcome to Waiting on the Trade, a monthly comics book club for people who can't keep up with monthly comics. I'm Matt Ledger. I'm Patrick Fitzgerald Fleck. I'm Michael Drew. Oh, solid bail voice, Mike. (laughs) (laughs) This month, we're talking about Superman, Batman, Supergirl, another Jeff Loeb joint with artist Michael Turner and colorist Peter Steigerwald, which I really hope I pronounced that correctly. (laughs) Sounds good enough. In case y'all need a refresher, Supergirl is the reintroduction of Superman's cousin, Kara Zor-El, into post-crisis continuity. Pat, do you know what the phrase post-crisis continuity means? What the fuck does that mean, Matt? It means it happens after the post-crisis continuity. Oh, it means it happens after crisis. Oh, shit. Which crisis? Oh. There's like 14 of them. The original guy. On Infinite oh. Earths? Yeah, on Infinite Earths. Earthies? Earthies? Okay, cool. What was about the crisis one? before that? Was what, what happened to her after that one? No, there was no crisis before that. There was no pre-crisis. Just no, there's no. Well, I mean, there is pre-crisis, and po- then there's post-crisis, and this is post-crisis. All right, but not oh. before the other crisis. But this is not the final crisis, was it? No, it's not the final crisis. There's not <laughs> enough. There's not enough random. There's not enough Superman singing music in this story for it to be final crisis. This is also the story where Batman gets punched by Darkseid and doesn't die, by the way. It doesn't just immediately die. I, I, I like that scene immensely. <laughs> I do too, but also it's kind of, no, I don't know, it's nonsense, but it's cool nonsense. We're going to get into that argument about cool versus good again today, This, <laughs> like for sure. Oh. It's a Jeff Loeb comic, go figure. Yeah. But before we get too far, Mike, you're back. Hey, how's life? Oh, well, life's great. I got I got good times happening. I'm uh, got a got a cute little baby. She's she's doing cool shit. <laughs> um, Shits are cool. I'm trying to teach her to wave. She hasn't quite gotten there yet, but we'll get there. And I'm gonna. Is be she proud. sick currently? She is currently sick. So I'm. And you've left her to come do this podcast with yes, us. Yes, I've left her with my sick wife to come to this podcast. So sorry, Sarah. She'll never listen <laughs> to this, but that's. My half-hearted apology for whenever she does happen to log in and listen. It's been recorded. It's good. It's in the logs. We did it. We can play it back. I'm sure she'll forgive me. When we, when you're killed, we can play it at the trial. He apologized. He apologized, <laughs> Your Honor. So, Mike, we're going to talk about this Supergirl comic. Because okay. you want us to talk about this Supergirl comic. Why do you want to talk about this Supergirl comic? Because, okay, I think this was the first trade I ever bought. Is it actually? I think so. I think this was definitely the first trade I bought. Because I, I remember buying this pretty soon after going to Comic Con with you, hmm. either pretty shortly after or maybe even during. I can't remember. That's so, Chicago uh, Wizard World, I assume. Uh, yeah, one of the one of the Wizard Worlds we went to I think, when we were in college, and I think it was the first time I'd read a Batman Superman crossover as well. Which I mean. I don't. I don't know what drew me to it specifically. It was probably the scantily clad Supergirl. I was going to say, I'm pretty isn't, sure I know. Which isn't, isn't a good reason, but it it turned into a. I thought a pretty damn cool book. I don't know if it makes a lot of sense. It does ma- mostly make sense, actually. It makes much more sense than Hush. Okay, Hush. but it. I I remember getting very very strong feelings for it at specific moments. Uh, uh, that. Uh, We'll talk about more, but when we're when we're on apocalypse and okay, specifically scantily clad teenagers in this one, you got to like no, no, point out where you have strong feelings. We're talking about apocalypse, not, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, and then and then at the end when Superman is, uh, well, well, I don't know what that fucking wall is, but he he punches our dark side out of it, so that that's fun. He punches dark side into it. What's the difference between into it and outside of it? No, uh, very big actually. <laughs> It's like the wall at the edge of the universe. So if you punch someone through it, they're outside the universe. Yeah. So punched him out of the universe. Pretty no, he punched him into the wall at the edge of the universe. There's a big difference. Is the wall itself alive or is it just made of other living beings that have been punched into it? I believe it's made of other living beings that have been punched into it. Although that might be like in flux currently because the Justice League like just broke the source wall like two years ago and they're still fixing it. So... Way to that go, there is there's a difference between being punched into it and being punched through it because being no one was punched through it until about two years ago. So wait. Yep. <laughs> How did all those other fucking things that are in that wall get to that fucking wall then? 
they were been punched there into since the beginning of time, man. So, so, so there's been super beings like Superman just punching people into this wall for it's the go to place eternity? to punch godlike right. beings. So, the new gods are the fourth world, and before the fourth world, there was a third world. I think the source wall is populated by people trapped from the third world. By world, you mean like universe? Yeah. Oof, Pat, as long as you're not honestly, from the first world we, we don't want anyone from the first world trapped in a wall i'm gonna find us a great new wall. gods explainer and we're gonna link it in the show notes i really don't understand they're like thanos right no but they're more a, powerful than that's thanos? a marvel guy no yes thank you i understand good that. job matt we got <laughs> okay. there <laughs> sorry pat but like power level wise are they more powerful than thanos Let's get into the Marvel versus DC. I think this. it depends on on the new god. If it, I, oof, I would are take they Asgardians fight over Thanos. Like, no. are they actually gods, or are they just? Oh yes, they're actually gods. Okay, but at the same time, they eat potato chips and sit in, and like <laughs> double dip in carrot trays and stuff. They're super weird, actually. I love the new gods, but I don't know as much about them as I should. <laughs> the, mm, okay. One of Darkseid's big things is he just, like, shows up in people's houses, which is why I really love the panel where, like, they're going to the Kent's, the Kent's house and Darkseid's, like, obviously just been there for an hour waiting. I swear to God, I want to pay an artist to, to do the scene of Ma Kent offering, like, tea to Darkseid as they wait for Superman Let me see to if I can find Darkseid sitting thing. in a chair. <laughs> <laughs> do you take tea, Darkseid? No, thank you. I'm, I'm good. Just awkwardly sitting there waiting for Dark to punch out her door. Which is why, like, whenever Darkseid actually gets in a fight, I feel like the comic both has succeeded and failed. Because, like, I like seeing Darkseid fighting, but at the same time, I feel like Darkseid should just be sitting most of the time. I don't know. In the latest Torn. DC fighting game, what is it called? Injustice 2? Something like that? Yeah. Whenever Darkseid is fighting, he only does it one-handed with another hand behind his back, just like nonchalantly. It's like, yeah, that's I Darkseid. like that. That's Darkseid. I'm into that. Should we briefly discuss the plot? <laughs> uh, yeah. Sure. I can run through it quick because I've got the, the bullet points of each part. Do it. Issue one. Do she it, lands. It. They discover her. She's in the Batcave. She's Superman's naked. like, hey, this is my cousin. Mm-hmm. She's not naked, Mike. She, she was naked for like this. half of it. She was she naked was, for a lot of it. She, she like, was naked for a lot of the first issue, man. Batman finds her in the ocean. She sneaks past him somehow and then steals his bat boat, which Batman get better bat boat security. Bat security for the bat boat. Yes, I'm sorry. Bat security for the bat boat. You got to get it all in there, Pat. Because a half naked, no, fully naked, sorry, Kryptonian teenager just like presses a panel and steals it, crashes it into a dock. That is not proper Batman preparedness. Yeah, you'd think he would have fixed that like a long time ago with, with Dick Grayson or especially Jason Todd. Jason Todd's a, a prime bat boat stealer, I would imagine. Okay, keep going. Uh, she's hanging out with Clark in the fortress and then Metropolis and then Wonder Woman shows up to steal her. Like, girl, you need a thong. Let me get you a thong. <laughs> girl, let, let me take you to my island. <laughs> there you go. Now you got hip huggers and a thong and everything's good. Then they're on the island. Kara makes a friend. Lots of doomsdays show up. We'll talk about that because I have feelings about it. I have, I do have weird feelings about that. It's weird. Kara gets stolen. Goes to Apocalypse. Brainwashed off panel, apparently. <laughs> talk about that one, too. No, all he did was show her the leather outfit. And she's like, you know what? Yeah, I'll be evil. Whatever. Oh, I do like that. I think well, that's that. fun. I'll be, I'll be bad. She's like, thongs were fun, but this is so much better. <laughs> so she turned evil for a second. She's going to kill Superman cliffhanger. Bum, bum, bum. Yep. Issue doesn't. five, they get her back to Earth. She flies around in the Supergirl costume. She dies. Wow. What a <gasps> good use of the story. She's dead. Except, wait, she's not. In issue six, Superman just, like, decides, hey, this is the time I'm finally going to beat up Darkseid for real good. For real, real. For fucking <laughs> good time. times. Which says it's fucking fun, and it's fun to watch. I, I don't know, man. We'll talk about it. Um, and then Supergirl's going to be Supergirl. And that's the end of the comic. It's a good comic. <laughs> I, I think I've ended out a, a low note there. Hang on. Let me go and try another take. And then Supergirl's going to be Supergirl. It's great. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure. All right, Mike. You said you had cool moments that you want to discuss that like make this comic stand out for you. Let's run through them. All right. First, uh, Crypto doesn't like Supergirl. I like, I like that. Just because it's Crypto. Anything Crypto. Fuck, the, fuck yeah. The Crypto in this book is super mean looking. 
Yeah, he is. It's actually kind of kind of a buff, mean dog. He's kind of scary. Crypto yeah. shouldn't be scary. Well, I mean, well, they depict is. laser vision as being terrifying in this. So, like, Superman wipes out all of the doomsdays. Okay, that's a thing where the, yeah. the comic crosses the line between cool and good to me, <laughs> and it lands squarely on, you tried to go for cool, but it just ended up being silly and weird. <laughs> like, Batman fought Doomsday in this comic. Like, Batman getting punched by Darkseid while he's wearing Apocalypse armor? Okay, you can justify that to me. The armor took the blow, whatever, the mother box healed him. Batman fought Doomsday with a battle axe in this comic. I don't know if you guys know this. Doomsday killed Superman. Doomsday clones. So not Doomsday like clones. Doomsday. Yes, yes. Clones, which are clearly inferior and wouldn't kill a normal man. It's not a normal man. It's Batman. He's rich. He's <laughs> rich. <laughs> That's rich, Pat. He is the 1%. He is the 1%. You cannot kill him. <laughs> He's just out here beating up Doomsday, who's trying to make a buck. <laughs> <laughs> so... So that, that that's not one of the scenes I was going to list as cool, but now I'm almost convinced to. Uh, just to you <laughs> it, I mean, like I feel like Mike, you have mentioned to me like, oh yeah, it's super badass when Superman just like lights up his heat vision and wipes out all those doomsdays. And, like, no, that's not it, that's not one of them. All right, all right. Well, they justify because we'll right after right afterwards he says, "I couldn't do that twice." So it's like, okay, yes, that was overpowered, but he has to take a breather, so it's fine. That was like the editor saying, like, we can't just have him do that all the this time. We need to be like a credible threat in other comics. <laughs> Still got a headache, so you can't do it. I do like the... Okay, we're going to get right into Batman and Dark Side's interaction. All right, let's do it. I, I really like that. Batman just being Batman and saying, all right, so here's what's going to happen, guys. Because I know what's going to... I know what's going to... I know what you want to happen, but... See all these bombs that I just put in the uh, are just activated in all of your uh, armories. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're gonna let us all go because otherwise I'm gonna blow your planet to fucking smithereens. Okay, he doesn't say fucking. He doesn't swear. He does say smithereens though. He does say smithereens. So, so Darkseid of course punches him, which you know he survives because he survives, and then Darkseid laughs because he's like shit. Anyone else I couldn't have, couldn't have done this to me, but you get away with it, and. I really, I really like that. That's cool. Batman, you know, I guess Batman and Darkseid. It's fun. I like that part. It's really fun. So I'm thinking about it now, like as we're talking, and I'm thinking through the like history of Batman overpowering Darkseid just out of nowhere. Because it, like, I feel like it's actually a trope. The more I think about it, because he does it here. And Mike, I know you've seen that episode of JLU where Bat Batman's just like leaping around and like somehow dodges the Omega beams, like gets yeah. the Omega beams to hit a parrot even instead of himself. Which like no one can. That's like, how they the work. Flash can't. The yeah. Flash can't do that. Flash isn't rich. Flash is not rich. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Dark Side's just out here trying to make a buck. <laughs> Dude, Batman beats him with the art of the deal. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Stop or I'll have to ruin the economy of Apocalypse. <laughs> Actually, basically what he says in this. You have a chance to be looked at as a saint or the devil. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> Batman also shoots Darkseid with a god-killing bullet in Final Crisis. So like, he does. I guess, I guess Batman just beats Darkseid all the time. He pretty much does. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> I mean, in, in Final Crisis, he does, he does spend a great deal of time building that gun. So it does not... I don't know. I don't think it's overpowered because it took him the entire time to build it. You guys, he's got a flying Segway scooter in this. He can't be beaten. Darkseid doesn't stand a chance. Pat, we've talked about this. I almost banged my table that I stopped myself so it wouldn't get out of the recording. Thank you. Thank you. We talked about this, Pat. It's called an astro harness. I <laughs> call them like I see them, man. It's a <laughs> Segway. <laughs> I just have this great picture now of Batman just like segueing up to Darkseid's throne room. <laughs> we never actually see how fast the thing moves. I like to think it's like a medium clip. It's not really that fast. <laughs> so, so I guess next cool part, I, I would argue the entirety of the sixth book. Uh, from Superman just beating the ever-living snot out of Darkseid 
to the Martian Manhunter helping rebuild Mott Kent's home. <laughs> oh, Martian Manhunter. It's, it's, it's fun time. Okay, Martian Manhunter with a nail in his mouth. Like, Looks top amazing. 25, top 25 Martian Manhunter panels. John Jones yeah. is not afraid to like do some elbow grease. He's in there. He's in there. He's it. a contractor. He does his contracting along with everything else. <laughs> Mike, can you explain to me how Superman beats Darkseid other than he hit him real hard? <laughs> he hit him real fucking hard. Not just real hard. <laughs> He hit him real fucking hard and then boom tubes him to the edge of the universe. And the, my understanding was punched him out of the universe, but I hear No, no, no. Punched him into the wall at the edge of the universe. I heard We, I, we have to be clear on that. Mike, the, the wall is like sticky flypaper. And when you get stuck to it, if you, <laughs> really, you're in there. So, yeah. Pat, Pat you're exactly right. <laughs> it's just a sticky, it's, an, it's a sphere of sticky flypaper. My, my prior illogical nonsense is it was that he punched him out of the universe which i think is much cooler so i'm i'm going to replace your reality with my own fantasy and continue with it i just so like dark side's a big deal right could we all agree on that dark side big deal i guess new gods are sort of like weird to me so he seems cool he seems cool i gotta say out of all my favorite characters granny goodness beats dark side by a million oh so. granny goodness Granny Goodness is my favorite, and she's the best. Fair time. I, like, I too like it. <laughs> Granny Goodness is amazing. Come on, come on. I am good for you. You remember that? Uh, that was a Wizard World, right? Where we went and we actually saw that yes. Granny Goodness cosplayer. <laughs> yes. The dude dressed up as Granny Goodness, and he looked he looked dope. It was an amazing cosplay. It was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but like Dark Side, Dark Side, big deal. Like, and how does Superman beat him? It's not like. Can sit. There's nothing to it. He just punches it real hard. Well, to be fair, had anyone tried that before? Yes, <laughs> a lot. Yes, but Superman. Didn't but wait, wait, had they pretended to be really upset about someone dying when they knew they weren't dead? Maybe that was the secret sauce. Yeah, maybe that was the key, right? Like not <laughs> actually being angry, but being angry at the same time. That's right. Fake anger is what did him in. That does take away from it a little bit. Like, when you realize that he would have known that Supergirl wasn't actually dead the whole time, it it, it takes away from his righteous fury a little. Okay. Like, I think it would be cooler if it's, it was Batman and Supergirl who came up with that. I don't know why Superman they would keep it. Know, yeah. Like, why would they keep it from him? I don't know. Well, I mean, Batman's a paranoid mofo in this story, so I mean. Yeah, but that would mean that he'd have to team up with Kara, and that, that wasn't happening in this. Oh, wait, guys, we have to re-record the intro. I forgot the, the cool tagline I had for this story. Okay. All right. Throw it in there. We're going back. Okay. It's um, Superman, Batman, my two dads. That's very true. She's a girl from another planet. They're two superheroes doing their best. Two guys and a supergirl? With a dog. Two guys, a supergirl, and the source wall? Otherwise known as uh, Tim Daly, Kevin Conroy, and Summer Glau. For those of you interested in the in the animated, yep, in the animated <laughs> version. Yes, I was actually thinking about this and like how it is a perfect story to get animated because it's like the artwork is very fluid and the colors are bomb. Like the colors in this story are fantastic, and I think they're most of what. Well, that's not true. They're not most of what makes me want like want to read it, but they're so good. Like there's so many great, like all the heat vision effects are awesome, especially when they're like when it's bouncing off of Wonder Woman's bracelets. The opening with Batman like riding his uh, underwater segue. <laughs> Also, very cool. Hey man, the that shot of him coming out of the ocean is pretty cool. He's yeah, like a mofo. I was was telling you, Pat, that that was like the the Wizard Magazine preview for this story, and I was hyped as heck at that last panel. Not really sure what he's doing. I think he might have a leg leg cramp or something. Yeah, he looks really cool. He's got that swimmer cramp. (laughs) And that one shot where they're looking at the dead Amazonian chick in the water, he's got that cloak like spread out around him. I like it. It looks like Morticia Adams. It's very cool. <laughs> I know the stylized Batman cloak, it's massive. It would not be practical whatsoever, but it looks Oh really no, cool. but like this is like tasteful stylized Batman cloak. We're not talking like Kelly Jones bat ears where they're just like three feet tall. They're like the ears are taller than Batman. They're like a good they're good length bat ears. It's a good length cape. You can justify it within like within the fiction. It, it's prime brooding material and he does it yes. well. Yes. Superman's jaw, for some reason, I can just like never get over how weirdly angular it is in this story, but Michael Turner drew a dope Batman. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. 
Oh, I forget they go to Barda, Big Barda's house. Yes, that's a good scene. Okay, so I I can't remember. Do they go in costume in the comic book or? Yes. I really like that. They're showing up to this lady's house. Come, hey, look, Superman, Batman are there. Oh, that, that's all they do in the in the uh, animated show as well. And I just I, I laugh because they're just strolling up. Yeah, and there's just a chick watering her uh, lawn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's a lovely day, Mrs. Kravitz, isn't it? So one of my recommendations for to like things you should read after this if you like this story is based entirely on that living room scene. <laughs> like if you like this living room scene, like the fact that Barda has to apologize to her next door neighbors that Superman just showed up, I have a comic for you. <laughs> Pat, what did you think of this story? Is this the first time you read this story? Uh, first time reading it, I watched it with Mike before, I believe, or both of you. I don't know. I've watched the animation before. I was going to say, I don't think I've seen the, the movie, actually. So I don't think I was there. I don't know. It's it's okay. It's an okay story. I would be more interested in if like any of the Supergirl stuff was actually interesting. Like they were sort of building it up to be. So yeah, you and I were like kind of talking off mic about the fact that... Microphone. The fact that, Michael Drew. Yeah, no, yeah, off the microphone, not off yes. of Mike the person. <laughs> yep. About the fact that, like, the fact that Supergirl is either good or bad is, like, pretty pointless. There's no, like, oh, is she going to be? No, she's exactly what she was from the beginning. Okay. Except for the part where she's brainwashed on Apocalypse, which we don't see how that happened or how it is, or how it's undone. Tight leather is going to do something to anyone. So I don't blame you. You need to breathe. Tight leather, high heels. I mean, anyone would succumb to that. If we'd spent like any amount of time with like any amount of rationale for that happening, other than just like, oh, they need to fight now because it's it's cool and it moves the story forward, I would feel so much better about it. Like up until the point, what indication do we have that Supergirl's like of her character? She made friends with the Amazonians. Is that what we've got basically? Right. She made friends, and she was. Tr- how, we don't have a sense of time either for how long she's on Themyscira to. I guess, learn how to fight. I mean, it's been a little bit. I think like each time we reconnect with the story, it's kind of been a little bit in between. Cause when she's at the fortress, I think they said like, she's been there for a couple of weeks by the time the, the crypto scene happens. And then, and then Superman takes her shopping. Oh. <laughs> we don't really get to know Supergirl all that much. And then she likes shopping and she's a yeah. girl. Exactly. <laughs> I actually Very really good. liked the scenes between her and, Harbinger on like on the mascara to the point where I I like was disappointed when Harbinger died. <laughs> like showed up to be be her friend only to die. <laughs> I mean that's that's how any any character get connecting with her. I mean, isn't isn't that part of for some reason I wanna say that that's part of how she fell into Dark Side's control. Uh, I mean, they never explain how she falls under Dark, dark Side's yeah. control. <laughs> no, I explained it already. It's the letter. No, I mean, Pat, you have a good explanation for it, but the comic doesn't. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, yes. I still think that <laughs> Harbinger's name should have been Cassandra, all right? Let's get some Greek mythology in there. No, Cassandra. It would fit so much better. DC, I am disappointed. Pat, someday I'll force you to read Crisis on Infinite Earths. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. And we'll have, a, we'll have a good time trying to figure out what's going on in that book. <laughs> and the truth will be revealed to me. Yes. <laughs> if I remember right, someone Wonder Woman kills a guy and it makes everyone else upset. No, that's Infinite Crisis, man. You got to get on that uh, crisis level, man. <laughs> but what's the difference between Crisis on Infinite Earths and Earths? And, I'm done. I can't. And Infinite Crisis? Yes. There's, the word infinite and crisis are in both. I think roughly 25 years is the difference. <laughs> Well, you see, Infinite Crisis is one crisis on one planet that's going real bad. Crisis on Infinite Earth is the same crisis happening infinitely in locations. It's different. It's different. Pat, you're actually right. (laughs) Well, you see, context clues. (laughs) God damn it. Uh, Yeah, no, it's an okay story. I think it could have been better. I think they decided for the safe, quick option as opposed to like blowing this out into two trades, which I think it could easily have been. 
I was going to say, there's definitely some time we could spend getting to know Kara and, like, actually having, like, because part of the reason Batman's is she good or is she bad is, like, kind of pointless to me is that we don't get to see her doing things a lot of the time. Like, other than her showing up randomly with a very convenient story that she's related to Superman, there's nothing really else that he can, like, base his suspicions on. I was thinking, but, like... Batman lives in the DC universe. Stuff is coincidental all the time. Well, she did. Okay. She blew up his bat boat, which is just not a good way to start off with Batman. He likes his bat boat. He does like his stuff. He's a rich man. He likes his things. He's so rich. But yeah. Wonder Woman's there. It's good times. It's all right. Could this have just been a Justice League comic? Mm, I mean, like, then you've got even more characters. And I think part of the problem is, like, the story has to focus on. Superman and Batman because it's their comic like the comic is called Superman Batman it's got to show Supergirl Wonder Woman shows up you've got to show dark side and stuff then like there actually is a lot to pack into six issues they got the Trinity in there with Wonder Woman they could have squeezed in some more Martian Manhunter you yeah know? just like two more there was the, of Martian Manhunter. the perfect amount of Martian thing. Manhunter in this story <laughs> <laughs> I thought we already decided that I mean it was good but I could always take more you always take more Martian Manhunter's the best also, we learned that Superman has just some Kryptonian or crypt, Kryptonian Kryptonite in his belt for special occasions. I mean, he brought it specifically for this thing. I don't think he always has it there. That would be. Can you imagine if his belt buckle like accidentally flew open? <laughs> What's this? Let us know. Oh, fuck! Oh man, do you remember that part of the story where Barda stabs the other female Furies with her helmet horns? Yes, that was Barta's that's good so cool. actually. <laughs> All right, so so uh, I guess I want to go back to the first book. Going back, okay. what's with what's with the blimps? <laughs> it's Gotham. Explain to me the fucking blimps. I don't understand why there's there's a, a cheaper way to control crowds and to make sure that police budgets can be stretched. You don't need all the fucking blimps. Gotham equals blimps. There you go. Go- Gotham's got blimps, man. Blimps How do you today's. tell Gotham and New York City apart? Gotham blimps. has blimps. Blimps. Gotham and Metropolis? Blimps. Blimps. I'm pretty sure it's to call back to the animated series. I'm oh, yeah, for sure. That's what it yeah. is. That's got to be what it is, but I don't... Blimps. Even blimps. in the animated series, I don't understand what was the fucking blimps. Like, can you imagine <laughs> how many police cars you could buy for the cost of a single fucking blimp? It's because Bruce Wayne's not sharing his flying Segway patents with the PD of Gotham, so they Actually, have to resort to blimps. In, in some continuities, Bruce has bought them those blimps. <laughs> oh my god, he's purposely re- Son of a two bitch. blimps. <sighs> Seems like you guys could have helicopters and airplanes and stuff, but I want you to have blimps. No, so you, you know what it is? With my stuff. Exactly, the response time of the PD is so slow because they're flying blimps. Blimps. They got so he can get to the crime hour. scene, he can punch people, and then he can disappear Do in the his night. thing, investigate without them showing up, and then <sighs> get away before their slow blimps show up. What a terrible fucking person. Jeez. <laughs> he wants the police department to be inept. Oh my god. Might, no, might as well give him a whole bunch of hydrogen inept. hydrogen-filled zeppelins. I'm sure this will end well. Man, <laughs> Bruce really needs to check his privilege, you know? God. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, blimps, Gotham. That's okay, just, fine. That's what they yeah. that's what they do. I'm still upset about it, but fine. It is like Metropolis has their tram system. That's what I mean, the tram system makes sense, though, because it, like mass transit. Cool, guys, it's great. I mean, as a as someone who goes to Disney World, trams are great. I, love I like it. there's literally a guy who dresses up in a bat costume and a dog with heat vision in this comic. And the thing we're just stuck on is blimps. Gotham said he has blimps. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> it does. It's Bruce Wayne keeping the common man down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. I'm a city councilman in Gotham City. Okay, yes. You've I'm, been bought off by the Batman. No, I have not been bought off. When a corporation not, comes to you and says, I will give you $30 million, but you need to spend it on blimps. blimps. I I take the $30 million. I buy, I buy blimps. Okay. I then proceed to sell said blimps 
and buy whatever the fuck I want. Because, that was the deal. That was the I deal. mean, the deal was to buy blimps. He never said I couldn't sell them. Wayne uh, Industries employs 80% of the city. You don't want to piss off Bruce Wayne. So wait, he employs 80% of the city, yet the crime rate's that fucking high? What are you paying these people? Why do you Jesus. think he wants to keep the crime rates high? Because his hobby is going out in a bat suit. All right, no, now we're crossing the line. We're crossing the line into a criticism that I will not stand for. We're selling these goddamn blimps. It's That's what I'm getting to. I'm it's selling a, all the blimps and I'm... It's and, a blimp-based economy, Matt. Just get with the economy. <laughs> oh, Jesus. We're further going on shit here, guys. Oh, oh, good. So this comic book, man. This comic book's kind of like just a big old blockbuster, which I think is part of the reason that we're fixated on blimps. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just like, it's a bunch of cool stuff. I'll put together. It's a Fast and Furious movie, right? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. yes, I agree with that. With a bit of characterization thrown in. So the the reason I actually wanted to have you back on, Mike, and discuss this comic, other than the fact that I bought it again and wrote up two pages of notes, the truth comes out. out. <laughs> <laughs> the real reason is that I was curious if you have like different thoughts reading it as a person who's now a father versus a person who bought this in college when you were just like, oh, hey, Supergirl is cool. Like, I was curious if you read the Superman stuff and you were like, oh, hey, I kind of identify with that now because turns out I have a daughter. Well, now now that you got me thinking about shit. I asked the serious questions on this podcast. I'm like, no, no. Why does Gotham City have blimps from me? <laughs> yeah, I, I could see like, OK, I'm I'm going to go off with my I, I remember my first read on this uh, where I didn't know that Superman knew that she wasn't dead. And. Like those those pages of Superman beating the living fuck out of Dark Side is is glorious because you, you don't okay, I didn't know that Supergirl was alive. Um and yeah, I could see I could see identifying with Superman even more now. <laughs> Just because if anything were to happen to my daughter, I would You would punch Dark Side into the source wall. There would be a fucking source wall being punched through, and it would be Probably a little more gruesome. <laughs> you're, you're making it real awkward, though, because this comic book really, really sexualizes Supergirl a lot. Okay, uh, we kind of talked about this on the Hush episode. <laughs> we, I think, again, my like my wife's take on it was it's no weirder her for for her to be wearing a thong than for her to fight Darkseid with her hair down. <laughs> yeah, there's that. I just, I don't know if it was. Uh, what was his name? Michael Turner, the artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I don't know if it was just his style to draw every every no, female. It's, like, extremely it's his talented. style. Yeah, but, it kind of is. But I check mean, like, out the series Witchblade if you don't believe us, because yeah, it's his style. But when you're when you're talking about the leather dominatrix outfit being the most uh, conservative outfit <laughs> a character is wearing in an entire comic book, uh, that's that's not a whole lot of material you're using there. So, so I guess, yes, I would identify with Superman in that I would want to be protective of Supergirl. But my daughter would never be allowed to hang out with Darkseid wearing that. So that's that's what we're getting to. Someday your daughter's going to make her own choices, Mike. Someday your daughter's going to be like, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm the leader of the female Furies. And what are you going to do when that day comes? I'm going to fucking punch Darkseid out of the fucking universe. That's what I'm going <laughs> to fucking do. I don't know, man. So I, like... I keep coming back to the page where Superman's talking about the the letter his dad wrote, basically, and that's a reference to Superman for All Seasons, which is might actually be the the best Jeff Loeb comic that I've read. And he's talking about how like basically all that raising his son right meant that was that his son was old enough to say goodbye. <laughs> and I was like, oh dang, that's actually like that kind of got me in the feels. And I figured it might get you in the feels, if not now, sometime from now it will. <laughs> Brace your feels, Mike. Brace your feels for when your daughter becomes the leader of the female Furies. <laughs> Fuck you, Matt. <laughs> it's not Fuck you. When. I had I told you I had beer tonight. I don't need to have the feels right now. So can we talk about the uh, the end scene where all the superheroes are like, "Yeah, be on our team. We're cool." And <laughs> we're there's the like DC a, universe. Yeah, we're awesome. You should join us. Yeah, we can talk about it. What do you want to say about it? <laughs> Uh, the light about Power Girl and I have to talk. Is that like an inside wink, wink, not judge? Because Power Girl was Supergirl. Yeah, basically. Okay, cool. That gets dealt with as part of the crises. Is she an Amazonian now? I don't know. 
Who? Power Girl. No, she's uh I think at that point she's still in Atlantean. Atlantean, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, recommendation. I mean, would you recommend this, I guess? It really depends on the person. If it was Mike, yes. If it was anyone else, I don't know. What do you mean if it was anyone? No one else likes Superman beating the shit out of Darkseid? No, I I was being obtuse. I'm sorry. I'm a simple man. I see I see Darkseid getting his ass kicked out of the universe. I, I smile. It's good. You press the upvote button. <laughs> you buy the animated version of it. I buy the animated version. They get... I see Dark Side punched. I buy. They get my money. Very good. Oh man, I am looking at this page of Wonder Woman reflecting the Omega beams as though that's a thing that you could do with the Omega beams, and it is pretty cool though. It is pretty goddamn cool though. Do the Omega beams like zip zap around? Because I don't see it very much in this. Uh, they do, and you're correct. <laughs> like it's all pretty straight, and that's not the Omega beams I know. So <laughs> hashtag not my Omega beam. So who would you not recommend this to? Who do you not see as being interested in, in Superman righteous fury and dark side out of the known universe? People who like a dark side that isn't just like punching other people and then getting punched by people. I prefer my dark side a bit crafty. Although, you know what? He did punch Superman through a screen door. That was kind of cool. I don't know, man. Okay, like, do you like the, the Justice League cartoons? You'd probably like this story, right? Yeah. And th- those were great cartoons. Everyone yeah. likes them. So everyone will like this book. There we go. We did it. Recommend it for everyone. 10 out of 10. I feel like maybe we bagged on this book more than we should have. The book's actually good. I don't think we bagged on this book. I might have bagged on the book. Oh, okay. I don't, I don't know. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to come maybe back Maybe 9 out of 10 for actually the goddamn good. blimps. We admire the their blimps. blimps. <laughs> one, we, one notch off for the blimps. We enjoyed the art. And the colors. Did really like the art. And Mike's liking the dark side bits. So yeah, we're okay. <laughs> great. Why did they collect the ashes of the fake Kara after after Dark Side got punched? Because you gotta sell it, even as the dude's embedded in the source well. You gotta sell it. I don't know, Pat. That's the thing, is like there's just edges that don't make sense. And that's where I like it's probably because I've read it four times. The first time I read this, I probably was just like, I love it, it's great. So Matt, maybe when was have you not seen the animated version of this? I, I have not. Um, so I, I kind of want to make a, make it just just a statement on it. They do change up the end, uh, or at least the, the the final battle quite a oh, bit. Really? Yes, they play it on me. They, they make it. They make Dark Side a lot strong. Dark Side here. <laughs> yes, like he actually almost wins. Um, Superman does not end up punching him through the source wall. See, I would like that because it seems like in here Superman just gets real mad and suddenly he's able to beat Darkseid and that isn't okay with me. I don't like it. So so yeah, it's it's Superman, Supergirl, and, and Wonder Woman basically um, there. Triple team him? Yeah, See, yeah, that doesn't make any much. sense to me either. Is like if Superman's really just like pissed off at Darkseid, it makes sense for him to throw Wonder Woman away through that like through that barn, right? But if it's all if it's all a ploy in the first place, like why can't they fight him together? <laughs> No, they, they do. For the com- um, no, he's talking about the comic book. In, in the, the comic, comic they the don't. Comic book, yeah. In the comic, the comic Superman's they like, don't. stay out of this. It's my comic book, Wonder this Woman. This isn't your fight. Your name's not on the title. Does no, it say Superman, it's... Batman, and Wonder Woman in this title? No. no. Get out of here. Anyways, so, so they, they basically take Supergirl and they're going uh, uh, to... She's going to live with Ma and Pa Ken. Is what's what's what's, what's going to happen? That's kind of the thing too. Is like by the end of the book, nothing's really even decided. Like Supergirl's going to be Supergirl, but other than that, it's like tune in next week, reader. She has which so I guess many is options. Comic books, but yeah. Um, and and so so they're dr- going to I guess to drop her off at Ma Ma Ken's, and and that's when Darkseid punches through the screen door and, and you know punches Superman, and proceeds to beat the ever living fuck out of him. He then punches Superman into orbit, and then it's up to Supergirl, who actually holds her own against him for a little bit before getting zapped. You know, gives a little a mild zap, and and then Superman comes back, and then they, then they fight for a while, and then it, it goes. It, it basically comes back to Dark Side winning because he's he, because they're not going to beat him. And what ends up happening is uh, I think Supergirl somehow steals his uh, boom tube uh, off of him, and. Uh, Superman heat rays him into the boom tube. Uh, and so they kick him off Earth that way. And I think what they explain is Supergirl somehow 
med- magnetic stripped the uh, the coordinate section on the on the boom tube, and so they don't really know where he where, where they sent him. So, but but it's not to apocalypse. So he's gonna he's somewhere away. He's somewhere. He's somewhere. Um. So that that's how they explain it. They're like, oh shit, we gotta get ready because he's because he's gonna come back. Um. But and then then they go to the uh, then they go to the large large grouping of superheroes, and she's she's cordially welcomed to the DC universe. See, now I want a Dark Side Lost in Space spinoff. <laughs> Meanwhile, and it just cuts to him floating in space, and it goes back. It's just no, that sounds like we're like every other page is dark side floating in space. Floating. <laughs> I would buy that comic book. <laughs> that as just... long as, as long as by like page six, he's found a lazy boy to sit in while he's floating in space. Yeah, no, he's like gathered all the asteroids around him into a chair. Into a chair, yes. And he's just sitting there brooding, <laughs> like yeah. the last. <laughs> He uses the omega uh, the omega beams to carve a chair out of an asteroid. Works. But yeah, Mike, I think that ending is better than the comic book. It has more resolution and like ties in to the story about Kara having to be like she was supposed to be his protector. But yeah, they and like let's up. like let Supergirl have a bit of agency in her own ending too. Yeah. Yeah. Which is nice. But I I I'm partial to both. I don't have a problem with the with the way Batman and sorry, the Superman punching him through the uh, edge of the universe because that's fun. I was gonna say it is one of your favorite things. It seems like mm-hmm. <laughs> you piss off Superman, you get punched out of the fucking universe. Deal with it. You're punched into the wall of the universe, which is sticky, like flypaper. Like flypaper. Pat, would you recommend this book to people? I'm turning your question on you. Uh, yeah. Why not? <laughs> It depends on what people are looking for. If they're looking for something that has more meat to it, I wouldn't give them this. It's, it's just, a summer blockbuster, right? Like, Yeah, it's a popcorn comic book, which is fine. It's entertaining. It's not going to, like, after we do this, I'm probably not going to think about this story. Oh, you will think about this story again. I will? Okay. You're going to see right. a blimp and you're going to be like, blimps, man. Shoot. <laughs> Two rules yes. of the 1%. Blimp gate. How could I forget? <laughs> so easily. Yeah, I mean it's a fun it's a fun comic book that if people are looking for a quick superhero filled treat, yeah, go for it. If you're looking for something with like makes you think, this isn't it. Which is fine. It is what it is. All right, so what would you guys recommend to someone who liked this comic? I have a couple things, but I want you guys to go first. Uh, I mean All-Star Superman. Yeah, that's a good one. I feel like that. See, All Star similar... Superman's like not a not a popcorn comic, though. <laughs> it is to some degree. I mean, I guess there's a way to read it though, as if it is. But I feel like you're definitely not getting all of it out of it if you treat it like a, a summer blockbuster popcorn comic. But I think you have to have a deeper knowledge of Superman to get a deeper response out of it. If you don't know, like if you came into this with you knew who Superman was and you basically know who Darkseid is. That's all you really need to get the same enjoyment out of all-star Superman. Fair. All right. How about for tomorrow? I think that's a pretty comparable Superman trade. You've read for tomorrow. Oh yeah. When did you do that? <laughs> did you I, do that when I wasn't looking? I did that while you were not looking. Yes. I, I told you to tell me when you read comics. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgot that one time. <laughs> <laughs> Try to keep you on a diet of good comics, Mike. You can't just go eat whatever you want. <laughs> what do you mean? Not good comics. It's not terrible. And no, it, it, it's not. Terrible. It's popcorn. It's popcorn Superman. <laughs> and I mean, we, we get to see Superman beating up a whole bunch of stuff, which is fun. Um, and he, again, he's facing a very personal loss in that one. So I, I, I think I'd push to that one if you're interested in seeing more Superman struggling with. Being more than him, uh, I guess, growing into a larger role, I guess, maybe. Uh, Matt, you could probably speak more to this than I could, but Mr. Miracle, if you liked Barda and Granny Goodness See, that, and the Furies. That's not a popcorn comic. <laughs> no, I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying. Well, I'm just saying, like, if, you li- if you like this bit where, oh, well, you know what? People do beat the heck out of Dark Side in that comic. <laughs> I'll yeah. give you that. Like, if you're interested in learning about more about Apocalypse and the Furies and Granny Goodness, that's in Dark Side. Like, it's all there. That is a comic that's going to make you feel some feelings, though. I would want you to be prepared before you, like, this. Co- that comic is not this comic. 
the new gods and all that jazz. Oh, so the one I did have to recommend based on the, the Barta living room scene and yes. Mrs. Kravitz with her hose is there's a, it's a justice league international annual and I'll find the exact link for the show notes, but it's one where basically the Joker has been hired to kill the eighties justice league, which is like booster gold and blue beetle and Mr. Miracle and Barda are in it. So throughout the issue, the Joker's just like trying and failing to kill justice leaguers. And so at the end, they're all gathering at Barda's place for a barbecue and the Joker shows up like in a tank. <laughs> and so the Joker's like in a tank menacing the <laughs> Justice Leaguers while they're trying to have a barbecue in Connecticut. <laughs> nice. And there's a great panel at the end where Batman shows up, sees like what's going on and just keeps driving. <laughs> 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 just like I'm out. I'm not coming to this barbecue. <laughs> I don't have many Batman comics to recommend. So on that side, I, 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 I mean, we don't have to do a ton. We did. We each did one. We don't want to sure. give all of our recommendations away on one podcast. That's right. Why, yeah. will, why will the listeners come back? Screw you. Come back to mom. listen for the recommendations. That's all I listen for. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, oh, just no. go to the end and listen to the recommendation. Not blimp watch, because that's going to be a thing now. <laughs> every time I see blimp, I'm going to bring it up. In every put, comic book. I'll put it in the social the social media post. Hashtag, <laughs> hashtag blimpgate. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know blimps are tools of the 1%? <laughs> when you're in Gotham, watch the skies. <laughs> All right, I think that's going to do it for this month's discussion of Superman, Batman, Supergirl. As always, if you want to get in touch with Pat or me, you can find us on Twitter as at the Hypnotoad and at Matt Ledge, respectively. You can also email us at waitingonthetrade at gmail.com and read more comics related goodness at mattreadscomics.com. Mike, is there a new place people could find you online since last month? No, and don't. Have you written <laughs> another blog post to these are the druages.wordpress.com? I said no and don't. Oh, okay, said never mind. No and don't. <laughs> it's been a joy, Mike, from beginning to end having you back on here. Mike, I am very glad you came on to talk superheroes with us. Thank you for Absolutely. coming on. I am too. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll be back next month talking about Blackbird with guest host Suzanne Payne. So don't miss it. <laughs>